got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. So guys, what's going on? Uh, Kading, Greg Kading is out. His lawyer won't let him do it. So, so we've been waiting around for Kading all day, and yeah, and he now is he's on the show. Really, I wanted to talk to him because there's so much to ask him. Yeah. Puffy was going up the stairs, and he said, "I don't care if Tupac die, I don't care if Biggie gotta die, and I don't care if she gotta go to prison for the rest of his life." <laughs> Getting back to Russell, Russell was following in the footsteps of his dad, and he was able to work through the LAPD and have all the things that had to be done within the LAPD. He certainly knew the streets very well, and uh, his circumstances in his case were far more tragic because he was killed in the line of duty. Killed in the line of duty. If that's the case, did, Pac, did Tupac life mean anything? Because they never saw that case. Sometimes if you saw the first case, you might saw the second case. But that never happened, correct? Yep. But he did testify reluctantly. The death row records security chief Reggie Wright Jr. once told him, quote, we're going to get those mothers who downed Pac. Through interviews of former police officers that worked in the death row organization, Mack and Gaines were identified as confidants of Suge Knight the owner of Death Row Records. They were present during uh, private death row parties, and that's where first time that we were able to really make the connection between those two. She don't want to get caught in a situation. That's why she was going to snatch the money from Knight them, and there don't be no money, because she can't see the big picture. And I'm, she don't understand the big picture. She don't understand the master and how it can be levied and how we can go and do what we need to do with it. She don't understand that. Ice and I, we've heard consistently, Suge, that you're the person behind the hit on Biggie. Well, they looked at y'all and told y'all to put ass live. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but see, because Perez and, and, and Reyes and his good friends, and Perez and Sharita and Reyes his great friends, and so all those three together were trying to plot. A reportedly missing photograph and former police chief Bernard Park's daughter came up during testimony today in the wrongful death lawsuit filed against the city by murder rap star Biggie Small's mother. Uh, that to me was probably another motive for Chief Parks to want to squash a lot of the information. There was an effort to to keep a lot of the information away from the public. This declaration from a jailhouse informant named Kenny Boagney links crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. Okay. Right, you see, Suge was willing to say, I didn't know those two cops, but maybe Reggie knew them. Never met those dudes, they never worked for me, they knew Reggie right, they didn't know me. You all know what those are Reggie people. <laughs> And Reggie was fast to say, I didn't know them either. I was just interested in why he would point the finger at Suge so quick. He wouldn't say it to you, but he definitely pointed it. We call that dry snitching. That Perez told how he worked security for Death Row Records the night Biggie Smalls was assassinated, and how he and Mac used cell phones to set up the hit. Boagney now says he was instructed by an LAPD detective to share his story with no one else investigating Biggie's murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper says LAPD may be involved in what she calls deliberate and intentional concealment of information. Jailhouse informant Kenny Boagney ties former LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. LAPD has withheld reams of other evidence as well, including at least two other jailhouse statements implicating dirty cops Mac and Perez in Biggie's murder. A thousand pages of information were withheld describing Mac and Perez's involvement in Biggie's murder. Three different jailhouse informants who offered to wear a wire were all turned down by LAPD. A wire, say informants, that could have caught jailed officer Perez boasting about his involvement with death row records and the Biggie Smalls murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper lists all the new information she says links former crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of Biggie Smalls. 
The sheer volume of the information, says the judge, belies any LAPD argument that it comes from just another jailhouse informant. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. Perez was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but she's good Perez. And 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 is good friends. And Perez and Sharita and Reg is great friends. And so all those three together was trying to plot. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac watching it. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was there was a plan already to do something to it. Because I know wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid too, you know. I'm quite sure they they they, they, they saw the first one, they were saw the second one, it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. All right, everybody. Somebody out there's been talking about me. Little old me. Why did I all of a sudden rise up and get on their radar screen? Maybe they're a little bit sensitive. Well, I want to address some of the lies that are going on right now. And the first thing I'd like to address is Century City News. That was a newspaper in Century City for 17 years. It was a print newspaper with a readership of over 50,000 people every two weeks. It was not a YouTube product. It was a print product. Remember when newspapers were actually in print? So Reggie's saying we had only a few subscribers is very misleading. And what is Century City? Well, it's an enclave of Los Angeles with over 6,000 attorneys. The accountants of Death Row Records, well, they were located in Century City. It's the financial hub of the West Coast. Most agents, managers are in Century City. 20th Century Fox is in Century City. And so are over 50,000 people every day. At least there were before the pandemic. Now I'm going to give you some beauty quotes by Reggie over the years. This is Reggie Wright Jr. in his own words. Remember this beauty? Hey, John! We got a lot to cover up, y'all. Remember what he said to Kevin Hackey? I can have you killed at any time. What did he say that to Kevin Hackey for? Remember, he called up Kevin Hackey out of the blue and said, Hey, uh, I'd like you to come drive for me. And Kevin Hackey said, Hey, man, if you want to come at me, come at me directly. You know, man to man. And Reggie responded, oh, Kevin, I can have you killed at any time. Now, wait a minute. Who else drove for Reggie? Wait a minute. Wouldn't that be, would that be Buntry? Was Buntry hired to drive for Reggie? Was he driving for Reggie when he was killed? I mean, huh. Kevin Hackey knew somehow that that was Reggie coming at him by just asking him to drive for him, right? So another beauty by Reggie is when he was, they were talking about, you know, killing Tupac and whatnot. He said, if we wanted to kill Tupac, we could have just taken him to a hole in the desert. What's implied there? The, you know, like we usually do, you know, so, Reggie, who did you take to a hole in the desert? Why were you thinking about that when you were thinking about killing Tupac, that you could just take him to a hole in the desert? I mean, what's that bullshit? Oh, so here we go. Another beauty by Reggie. This is what Reggie said. We're going to explore some of the things they found out during the Greg Kading investigation. I helped a lot with that investigation. Wait a minute. Wasn't Reggie the one who also drove all the witnesses to their interviews in Vegas? And then he was able to sit in on those interviews. Doesn't that sound sketch as hell? Doesn't that sound suspect? Well, it is. No, no investigation 
allows an outsider, a civilian, somebody who was in charge of security to sit in on the witness interviews, highly, highly suspect and highly suspect for Vegas. Here's another beauty by Reggie. We did the LAPD investigation of the two matters, which was talked about in Murder Rap by Greg Kading. What? We did the investigation? We? He was involved in the investigation into himself? I mean, what the hell? And then here's another one, which reinforces the fact that thievery was occurring. He said... Why are you worrying about my money? Simon says publishing. Shug don't own nothing no more. When he came home, I was going to sell it back to him, but we didn't. That's out of Reggie's own mouth, the fact that he stole from Shug Knight. Here's another beauty by Reggie. We're going to get Biggie for Downing Park. He said that to recruit people to get them to help out with the murder. Here's another beauty by Reggie. You're at your weakest moment riding down the street in a car. Can you believe Reggie actually said that too? Well, he would know. He would know when you're at your weakest moment. And if you were security, Reggie, why wouldn't you have uh, security on Pac in his weakest moment, security on Suge in his weakest moment. And why did you confiscate the radios? And why was, why was Gotham said on your radio at the exact time that Suge and Tupac were shot? Everybody thought they were dead because the car didn't move for like 90 seconds. So they thought they got them. And that came over your radio, Reggie. So... Kind of crazy. Another thing he said was, I'm a cop in Compton. I can deal with both sides. Well, Reggie, what are both sides? Is that Crips and Bloods? Is that gangs and cops? Is that the CIA and the streets? What is that, Reggie? Could you clarify that for us? What's both sides? Was that the... Uh, death Row Records side and the Interscope side. What was that, Reggie? Maybe you could clarify dealing with both sides. The street and uh, business. What was that, Reggie? Well, LAPD Detective Fred Miller said that Reggie controlled the drug trade in Compton. And what do we have in Compton? We got six police helicopters traveling all those drugs around. One of them crashes, kilos of cocaine strewn about everywhere. We've got uh, uh, a Learjet that comes in to Compton Airport with drugs. We know about that. And it was Compton PD that was driving those drugs around. So yeah, Reggie, maybe you did control the, the drug trade. That's what Detective Fred Miller at the LAPD said. And then what happens? Reggie catches a case out of Tennessee for drug trafficking and money laundering. And let's have a big reminder that in the Compton Police Corruption Report, Reggie Wright's telephone number is in Keefe D's payo book that was confiscated by Compton PD. And what went missing out of the evidence locker at Compton PD? 96 kilos of cocaine, Reggie. Where did those kilos go? And why was your father so agitated when they were asking him questions about that? Huh. And y- your your name is found, your number's found in Keefe D's payo book. And you and your father always wanted to know where the raids were going to happen the day before. And you guys went to Keefe D's stereo shop the day before that was raided? Huh. Well, and then there's document 00648, authored by LAPD Professional Standards Bureau, 70 pages entitled Reginald Wright Jr. Criminal History Inquiry and Transcript. And that was hidden from the Wallace Civil Trial by LAPD. What is this document, Reggie? And hey, 
Let's also shout out to Don Sikorsky. Do you have this document? Wasn't this document supposed to be released by you, Don, on October the 23rd? Perhaps people should be asking Don Sikorsky about this document. And for a reminder, just to Reggie and everybody out there, I didn't make up this conspiracy theory. It was out there all the way back in 1998. You see, even back then, Reggie Wright Jr. was a suspect in both of these murders. So guys, what's going on? Uh, Kading, Greg Kading is out. His lawyer won't let him do it. So, so we've been waiting around for Kading all day, and yeah, and he now is he's not no Really, I wanted to talk to him because there's so much to ask him. Yeah. Puffy was going up the stairs, and he said, "I don't care if Tupac die, I don't care if Biggie gotta die, and I don't care if Shu gotta go to prison for the rest of his life." Yeah. Getting back to Russell, Russell was following in the footsteps of his dad, and he was able to work through the LAPD and have all the things that had to be done within the LAPD. He certainly knew the streets very well, and uh, his circumstances in his case were far more tragic because he was killed in the line of duty. Killed in the line of duty. If that's the case, did, Pac, did Tupac life mean anything? Because they never saw that case. Sometimes if you saw the first case, you might saw the second case. But that never happened, correct? Yep. But he did testify reluctantly that death row records security chief Reggie Wright Jr. once told him, quote, we're going to get those mothers who downed Pac. Ice and I, we've heard consistently, Shug, that you're the person behind the hit on Biggie. Well, they looked at y'all and told y'all to ass live. A reportedly missing photograph and former police chief Bernard Park's daughter came up during testimony today in the wrongful death lawsuit filed against the city by murdered rap star Biggie Small's mother. Uh, that, to me, was probably another motive for Chief Parks to want to squash a lot of the information. There was an effort to, to keep a lot of the information away from the public. This declaration from a jailhouse informant named Kenny Boagney links crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. Okay. Right, you see, Suge was willing to say, I didn't know those two cops, but maybe Reggie knew them. Never met those dudes, they never worked for me. They knew Reggie right, they didn't know me. He always would say, those are Reggie people. <laughs> And Reggie was fast to say, I didn't know them either. I was just interested in why he would point the finger at Suge so quick. He wouldn't say it to you, but he definitely pointed it. We call that dry snitching. That Perez told how he worked security for Death Row Records the night Biggie Smalls was assassinated, and how he and Mac used cell phones to set up the hit. Boagney now says he was instructed by an LAPD detective to share his story with no one else investigating Biggie's murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper says LAPD may be involved in what she calls deliberate and intentional concealment of information. Jailhouse informant Kenny Boagney ties former LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Small. LAPD has withheld reams of other evidence as well, including at least two other jailhouse statements implicating Dirty Cops Mac and Perez in Biggie's murder. A thousand pages of information were withheld describing Mac and Perez's involvement in Biggie's murder. Three different jailhouse informants who offered to wear a wire were all turned down by LAPD. A wire, say informants, that could have caught jailed officer Perez boasting about his involvement with death row records and the Biggie Smalls murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper lists all the new information she says links former crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of Biggie Smalls. The sheer volume of the information, says the judge, belies any LAPD argument that it comes from just another jailhouse informant. The murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. Perez never was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but see, because Perez, 
and, and, and Reds and his good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reds and his great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking pot, watching it. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to it. Orlando wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure they, 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 they saw the first one, they saw the second one, because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. All the artists at Death Row was willing to come with him. David Mack worked for you, right? No, ma'am. Never? Never met him. Never heard of him. Didn't know who he was until the accusations that he possibly did work for me. And that's been investigated by LAPD and all of that. Why would I want a paper trail when I never brought him around nowhere? So if I'm going to hide him in secret, you think I'm going I'm to let somebody catch a paper trail? They were paying cash by Snoop. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me too. Because Perez and, and, and Reds and his good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reds and his great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. How about Rafael Perez? Never heard of him until all the incidents happened. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking pot, watching it. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to it. So why does everyone keep telling me that David Mack was working for you? Yeah, I never heard that. You never heard that? That he worked for me. I You've heard, never heard that? Wait a minute, let me clear that Come up. On. I'm saying by anyone that's credible, that will work around there or anything. Um, like I said, that was all investigated by LAPD. I turned over my payroll, everything. You always will tell you, those are Reggie people. <laughs> Orlando wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure they, 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 they saw the first one, they saw the second one, because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Same people, same circle of people. It had nothing to do with me, you know?